In this video, we will be going over how to link test and code to requirements. If you're working in a regulated industry such as aerospace, uh, medical, or even automotive, you probably are familiar with the need to link your test code to a specific requirement that it meets. If you're working in consumer electronics or in R&D or in another environment where it's not clear cut what needs to happen and you're left to your own devices, you should still write down what you're trying to do and link your code against some sort of requirements list so that when you, if you ever get audited, you have something to justify. It also helps you to make sure if you write down beforehand what you're trying to accomplish, then this also gives you a bunch of, of tools to go back and do a review check sheet basically to say, yes, I've done what I thought I did and that I don't have anything skipped or, or, or additional things deployed that I don't intend to. So let's get into this. So I've, I've gotten a, I've had to do a couple things to do this. First, we'll go over the uh, how to add the requirements into test and then we'll be going over some custom test and steps uh, or sequence analyzer steps I've written to get them. Uh, NI was very nice in that they added the requirements to the requirements fields to the property objects. I think it was back in test and three, five or something. It's been around for a while, but if you're not using their additional add-on tool, the requirements gateway, then you have to write your own sequence analyzer step or something else to pull them out of the, the source code. But basically you can link a requirement to an individual step and it's under properties. You've probably seen it and under properties, you have this requirements field. This is just a string array. So you can put whatever you want to in here and it'll link, it'll, it's, it'll be a link to a requirement or I should say a dumb link to requirement. And in the project or in the property object, it's a requirements is a, has an array called links, which is what these string arrays are. And I've further overloaded it per se by just using a comma separated value format. In the format I typically use is three columns. You can see here you have the requirement ID, and this is like your JIRA ticket number or something out of a document or some, something you can trace back to. Then it's the summary of the requirement. So in this case, measure voltage, really simple, or it could be measure analog channel four, something like that. And then the third column is the one I'm really interested in, which is, is it done? And so I have, in the example I'm showing today, I have basically two modes in this third column. It's either done or it's not. So if it's done, then I'll run one set of rules to pick it up. And if it's not done, I'll run a different set of rules. They'll also pick it up. So I've, I've uh, put in three test steps here to demonstrate the different usages of it. In this one, I've got a, a test step that is done. I have a test step that I've labeled in progress, or it could be whip, or it could be waiting for a review, or depending on what your workflow is, that's you could put it in there. And the sequence analyzer steps I've written won't care. It's, it's either done or, or it's not. Then I've also uh, put in a broken one where I've got an additional column, which is, and I put in don't know, don't care, just some garbage data back here. And I have a, a sequence analyzer step that will check to see if it's a what we call a malformed requirement. And this is useful if somebody fat fingers something and forgets to put in a comma, puts in a comma not thinking about it, et cetera. These, this will, will uh, pick that up. But most of the time, you're probably not going to be at the step level. The, uh, if you ever use DO-178C from the FAA, they typically recommend that you should have a requirement for about every 20 lines of source code. That's more of a, of a C or a C++ or if you're using ADA, that type of thing. But in test end, the, the way I interpret that is, is that you should have at least one requirement per sequence, which is usually where you're going to be working at. And that's kind of nice, too, because then in your sequence list, it actually has a data, dedicated column called requirements. And if you right click it and go to sequence properties, you get your requirements list here. It's a little bit clunky to work with. To insert an item, you start typing. So we'll do test for. And you can link as many uh, requirements as you need to for that sequence. It's also a good review tell if somebody's got one sequence and they're listing like 50 requirements in it, then that may indicate that they should probably refactor that sequence to do less things. Then we'll press OK. All right. And then what we're going to do next is that if we go to the Analyze Sequence button, you'll see that by default, there's not much in here. So it's just going to give me these, these basic ones. 
But then if we click this options button and go to available rules, we can import a series of rules that I've already set up. And this is in my subversion repo. Come on. And basically you load that and it gives you three analysis modules and three rules. I'm going to uh, post the source code for this to my GitHub repository. So you're welcome to download this and the pre-built binaries I've got. Okay. Oops. And of course I pressed the wrong button. Oh, well, let's do it again. Libraries, documents. Import. Import our items and press OK. The severity you can uh, change depending on what you wanted to do. In this case, I've got three rules that I've got three functions that do slightly different things. The first one is just, I want a list of all the requirements it finds inside the sequence project. And that severity level is information. I want to know about it, but I'm not going to really, I'm just going to show it. I'm not going to make any judgment calls on it. If I have any requirements that are not flagged as done, you're going to get a warning to say, okay, well, this isn't necessarily an error because usually you're working on some stuff at any given point in time. But before you go through a release process, you need to make sure that all of these these warnings are addressed for your unfinished requirements. If you uh, these things are also set up by default to not analyze uh, skip steps. So if you skip a step, it won't pick up the requirement, and if it doesn't pick up the requirement, it won't be in your checklist to check off before your release. The third one is an error, which is just you've set up your requirement wrong. Please go fix it, and that's something that your your developer should be fixing as they go along and then we'll press OK and OK. The DLL is just inside the search directory path with no subdirectory or anything. It just needs to be in one of the like test and public directory or, or if you have another common libraries search directory, you can put it in there. And then we go back to our sequence and we do analyze. And now you notice when I do group by rule, I now have one malformed requirement. We can click on it, it'll take us there. I've got these requirements that came up, they're not malformed, and this is their status. So if I click on it, it will go to that step. If I click on the sequence, it should highlight the sequence. And then for my warnings, I've got an unfinished requirement in two different places. Those are, those are my two in progress ones. And then what you should do as part of your release process is you can get, you can run this automatically if you're running a Jenkins in, instance, or if you're not, you should still have at least another engineer go through this. And let's go take a look at it. Did I open that up? Okay, so when you open up this XML uh, document, it will give you a security warning because there's scripts involved. And this is what you end up seeing. This is the analysis report for your test sequence if you set it up so that your sequence analyzers uh, walk the whole project. If you, if you point it at the root sequence, it will go through all the subsequences as well. And then you get some nifty uh, drop down menus where you can sort it by severity. Do you have any errors and what you need to fix? And this will pick up any, any output from the sequence analyzer, not just the, the sequence analyzer steps I've written. But if you sort it by rule, then suddenly you get this very interesting report, right? You're like, okay, for my requirements, I've got one malformed requirement I need to fix. It's not in the right format. Here's the requirements, and they're added to this list in the order they are in the test sequence, so they won't be in alphabetical order. But that doesn't mean you can't grab them and sort them in Excel or something else. Under the hood, this is just an XML document, so you can go to town on it. 
And then here's your warnings to say, okay, very clearly, here's the requirements we know about, and here's the ones we haven't finished yet. And then typically what you would want to do, like down here, it will tell you what, what these all mean. Typically what you would do as part of a, of a release process is that you would want to print this off into like a PDF format so that it's not editable at some point in time. And that becomes one of your design artifacts to say, okay, here's the requirements that we, we, had, we wrote it against and here's the status of, of what they all are. And that in 10 minutes or less is how you add requirements to your test and test sequences.